Hello and Namaste. Welcome to our Facebook live session today. And thank you so much, dear viewers, for joining us. This is Dr. Srinidhi Chadambaram. Today, we're going to talk about a very important topic, bone health. Bone health is important at every age and stage in life. The skeleton is our body storage of calcium, which is a mineral that is very important for our bodies to function. Loss of bone strength can lead to what is called osteoporosis, in which the bones become very fragile and are more likely to break. In fact, older adults with osteoporosis are very vulnerable to fractures in the wrist, hip or spine. And once these fractures happen, they can be serious limitations to mobility and independence. But today we know enough about this condition. We're talking a lot about it. And fortunately, there are many things that we can do at every age to keep our bones strong and healthy. While anyone can develop osteoporosis, it is the women who are more likely to develop this than men because women uh, do have the hormone estrogen which keeps their bones with good density. And once they attain menopause, there is a very rapid rate of bone breakdown and they're more vulnerable to osteoporosis. So today we are going to discuss osteoporosis, what you need to do to preserve bone health throughout your life. I am honored to welcome Dr. KJ Reddy, who is the Chief Joint Replacement Surgeon at Apollo Hospitals, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. Dr. Reddy completed his MBBS from the Usmania Medical College, Hyderabad, MS from the PGI Chandigarh, DNB in uh, New Delhi, and then he completed uh, and was awarded the FRCS uh, from England, Edinburgh and Glasgow. And then he also did his FRCS in orthopedics in the UK. He's done a fellowship in advanced joint replacement surgery uh, in both UK and Germany. And uh, he has organized numerous conferences, given many lectures and live surgeries in several conferences, won several awards, including the best orthopedic surgeon of 2018 and 2019 by the Times of India, as well as the FAMA Asia GCC Award for Excellence in Leadership in 2021. Uh, he's also uh, been the coordinator of several academic courses like the MCH Auto course in the UK, board member of the National Board of Examinations, Arthroplasty Society in Asia, chairman of the Fellowship Committee Indian Arthroplasty Association, and many more. So also a journal reviewer for many national and international journals. Welcome, Dr. Reddy. Thank you so much for sparing the time to join us today. Uh, so we're going to talk about what women should know about osteoporosis risk. So let's begin by asking you, what does it mean when someone says that, you know, your bones are older than your age? Yes, I think uh, osteoporosis is a common problem. Most of the time, it's uh, underdiagnosed, undertreated, and you end up in uh, complications. Um, we keep saying that whenever we see the x-rays or a, a CT scan, um, as we know, the bones get stronger as we get older in the sense, children to adult age, middle age, older age. So we expect in the middle age, the bones tend to become weak if you're not putting enough not taking enough precautions. So when the bones, enough calcium is not there for that particular age, we say your bones are older than you. Okay. So what, what must we uh, know about our bone health uh, and also about osteoporosis? Yes, because most of the time, the osteoporosis is asymptomatic and they present with fractures with uh, spine fractures or any fractures. So we have to know, uh, we have to know if any pain, especially in the back pain, any fracture, trivial fracture, like a wrist fracture with a trivial injury, we should strongly suspect they're suffering from osteoporosis. And anybody who's got more than two fractures with a severe, uh, I mean, so a trivial fracture, we assume they have osteoporosis. So what is the process that happens in osteoporosis? What happens to the bone? Yes, that's a very good question because during our lifetime, the bone is not fixed one. Every day, calcium gets deposited 
and it's absorbed into the system. In younger age, children and when they're growing young adults, there's more calcium deposited and less calcium is taken from the bone. As we get older, there's more calcium deposited, uh, less calcium deposited, more is taken away. Yeah. They should be balanced between deposition of the calcium and absorption of the calcium after certain age. If this balance is not maintained, so there's more calcium is lost, end up in osteopenia than osteoporosis. So what should, uh, you know, uh, what should one do in terms of uh, uh, taking care of this? You mentioned precautions. Yeah. So uh, at what age must we start uh, looking into it or thinking about it and what can we do? Yeah. Generally, it's more common in women because as you said in the introduction, estrogen protects the bone. When, once they start, uh, I mean, it's menopause, perimenopause, estrogen levels becomes less. So they're prone for osteopenia and osteoporosis. So routinely, they should get checked up between, I mean, it's around perimenopausal age between 40 to 50. Um, and that's, that's why, because um, what happens is, because majority are asymptomatic, we should have a screening test along with the, uh, their calcium level as well as vitamin D. And anybody's symptoms, especially back pain and perimenopausal age, trivial uh, injury followed by fracture, they should be screened for, uh, to know the diagnosis of osteoporosis. Uh, so how is the screening actually done? Screening, most of the time, it's a clinical screening with a history of two fractures with a trivial injury, that's one. Back pain starting in uh, middle age after 40, 50, the more likely. And conditions which we'll discuss Predisposition. Some people are prone for osteoporosis because of their metabolic conditions, because of their medication, because of their habits. So those people should be screened. Screening is routinely done by testing their calcium and vitamin D and bone mineral density. Though there is, it's not very perfect, but that's the only thing we have. So People with perimenopausal age and people above 50, 55 in men, they should get tested routinely with uh, BMD, bone mineral density. DEXA scan, that is. That is called the DEXA scan. Um, you also mentioned about people who are prone for osteoporosis. So is it also familial or inherited? Or, uh, I mean, in the sense, is there a familial tendency for people to get osteoporosis? Or what are the people, who are the people who are at risk, really? There is no gene associated, but it runs in families, if they're grandparents. There is a risk, like in osteoarthritis, there's a risk. And some families are prone for this. So if there is a history in the family, they should get screened earlier age. So sometimes we notice that, you know, in the bone density test, even at a younger age, it starts by showing that there is osteopenia. So what is the difference between osteopenia and osteoporosis? Yeah, that's a good question. Initial stages of osteoporosis is called osteopenia. Osteopenia is not a disease. That means your calcium level in the bone is reduced, but uh, they are correctable. You can correct by taking measures. And if it progresses further, if 30% of the calcium is lost, it's osteopenia. It's more than that, then osteoporosis. Osteoporosis leads to pathological fractures. So osteoporosis is a disease. Osteopenia is a condition where you can still rectify. So how do you rectify uh, or at that stage when it is discovered? I think, I, I, I think the best proven method of Preventing osteoporosis or osteopenia is putting bones under the load. Scientifically, um, we should, because bones will respond to the load. Um, so if you do exercises, especially weight bearing exercises, that doesn't mean heavy weight lifting, but uh, half kg weight, both upper and lower body, and using various exercises where you put the load across the bone, then there is a more calcium is deposit, deposited. Present lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle is high risk for osteoporosis because our bones are not put under the load. If bones put under load, bones become stronger, muscles become stronger, joints become 
stronger. So entire skeletal system becomes stronger and that will prevent osteopenia and osteoporosis. Uh, what are the other, are there any dietary or other lifestyle measures to, to reverse or prevent osteoporosis? Yes. Diet is very, very important. We should have enough calcium in the diet. And the most common thing which leads to calcium deficiency is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D, as you know, we don't call it vitamin, it's a hormone. It's got multi uh, function. So most of us are deficient in uh, uh, vitamin D. Because vitamin D is synthesized in the skin. We have to get exposed to the sun between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. for about 20 to 30 minutes, which most of the time may not be possible. The best way is to take vitamin D, maybe 60,000 units every, every week initially, maybe for three months, then take once or twice in a month. Because what happens is taking orally, there is no intoxicity or uh, toxic dose because body will take the amount required as, 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 as needed. And the calcium also, what happens is, whatever amount of calcium you take, it only gets absorbed what you need, what the um, demand of the um, skeleton. So there is no overdosage. So you can regularly take this one. That's the best way to prevent. Of course, good diet like uh, um, dry fruits, healthy vegetables, um, fruits, um, avoiding alcohol, and smoking, which are very high risk factors for osteoporosis. So can we talk a little more about menopause and uh, osteoporosis? So what exactly happens uh, in menopause? Yeah, as we discussed earlier, estrogen is a protector, bone protector. And during menopause, as we know, estrogen levels come down. As because bones are used for estrogen, if it is deficient or low level, the calcium gets, the activity of absorption is more. The osteoclastic, which is a bone destroyed cell, become more active. More calcium is uh, taken out of the bone, then the amount gets deposited. And it's variable because some people start menopause early, some people start late. So during that period, they should get checked their estrogen level, as well as test for um, osteoporosis or osteopenia. And the people, if they're severe, they should have supplementation of calcium, vitamin D, as well as occasionally, depending on even estrogen, if, if it is severe. So what, what are the treatment options if once somebody is diagnosed with uh, osteoporosis itself? Yeah. Uh, what are the medications and how is it treated? Yeah. Uh, the osteoporosis, as I said, the prevention is the best way, preventing by load bearing, continuous load bearing exercises. Prolonged exercise is good for the body rather than rapid, short term heavy lifting. That's the that's best way to preventing. But when you are osteoporosis already, you should be very careful doing heavy ex exercises because you're likely to break your bones if they're weak. Calcium supplementation, vitamin D supplementation is important. Along with that, there are bisphos group of medication, bisphosphonates, as well as parathyroid, PTH, parathyroid hormones. Depending upon their level of severity, we have to start one of these groups over a period of time. And we can, to some extent, reverse the osteoporosis. And osteoporosis is the common cause of hospitalization because of hip fractures in Europe and America. Most of them end up in uh, fractured hip. And osteoporotic bones are difficult to fix because we put a plate or nail, they cut through both because of the weakness of the bones. So the incidence of morbidity, mortality is high with these people. Uh, also, are there any other medications that increase the risk of osteoporosis? Yes, that's I think uh, um, an important question because uh, nowadays, for various reasons, especially following transplantation, we are using immunosuppressive medications, especially steroids. Steroid is the common cause for uh, osteoporosis. And in our country, as you know, steroids are uh, used to, for various reasons, sometimes overused. And that's a common cause for uh, osteoporosis. So those who are taking steroids should reduce the dose if they don't require, if there is some, yeah, anything else which can take instead of steroids should uh, uh, do it. 
And those people with steroids should have supplementation. They should take all the precautions and treatment for osteoporosis. So does osteoporosis occur in men as well or is it largely seen in women? It is less common in men, but it does happen. But it starts late at the age of maybe 60, 65. People at the age of 70 because our longevity has gone up. So we see a lot of men also with osteoporosis later on in age 70, 80s. But what about uh, in women? Uh, can it occur at a younger age as well or uh, during pregnancy or during those times when the calcium demand is higher? Or is it only uh, in the perimenopausal, postmenopausal age? Majority of cases perimenopausal, but uh, younger age it does happen if there are systemic conditions like if they have metabolic problems where the calcium metabolism is not good or they are taking steroids or their level of activity is not good or their dietary intake is not good. So it can happen in your age. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you would like to uh, advise women on what they must do to overall maintain their bone health? And are there other conditions uh, or is this the most common uh, bone condition that they must be wary about? Yeah, I think uh, in orthopedics, we see a lot of women with bone condition and osteoporosis is the basic problem which will lead to many other problems like deformities, fractures, commonest cause of a hip fracture is osteoporosis at the age of 55, 60 in women. So it will lead to hip fractures, spine fractures, wrist fractures. And as I said, these are difficult to treat because of osteoporosis. Whatever we do, we have to be uh, extra careful and treat osteoporosis along with fractures. And most important is prevention. They have to do a regular weight bearing exercises after age of 40. Because before that, most of us, most of them are active and they should check their calcium, vitamin D level and screening for osteoporosis, especially DEXA scan, as well as hormones. If any insufficiency are below level, they should take replacement, hormonal replacement because nowadays there are hormones which will not cause serious side effects. And especially women during perimenopausal age, if they have severe symptoms of postman what is that, flushes, hot flushes or uh, um, menopausal symptoms, they must see the doctor and get it checked and it treated accordingly. The best way is doing weight-bearing exercises over a period of time, which will prevent osteopenia and osteoporosis. Thank you, Dr. Reddy, for this wonderful discussion. So viewers, I hope that you found this session useful. Please do start following all the tips and advice given by the doctor to ensure that you're always at the peak of your bone health. Healthy bones are very important to ensure that you're always fit and energetic to pursue a high quality of life and achieve your goals. Do reach out to us at any time for further queries. We're always present in several of our social media channels to assist you whenever uh, you would like to ask us for more details. Remember that only one thing can stop us from realizing our dreams is poor health. So start today and live a very healthy life and feel good. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.